Hi everyone, Alan Abbas here from Windsor, Ontario. Glad to be here on the Canadian Real Estate Channel. Uh, this is my latest flip. It's a mobile home just outside of Windsor. Uh, come check it out. So we've done quite a bit of work to the exterior. We actually put a brand new roof on. Um, and let me just uh, back up for a second. So at this specific park, they have a, a list of repairs that the new owner is required to do. So this is why uh, when I purchased it, it had just a flat roof. I, I went uh, ahead and put on a pitched roof or a peaked roof with shingles. I had to install the soffit, fascia, uh, eaves trough, uh, gutters. Uh, there was a deck here, but it was it wasn't the greatest uh, shape. It was actually kind of rotten, so we put a brand new deck on here. Um, replaced all the windows. We even installed the mini split system, so it's an electric system that does heating and cooling. And uh, changed the light fixture, uh, exterior door. And we did a little bit of landscaping. It, it, there were some shrubs there, so I just asked my contractor to put some black mulch out front just to uh, make it look better. Um, and that's really it. Oh, and one last thing. There was actually a, a shed on that cement pad back there, but it was totally dilapidated. So we just knocked it down and, uh, you know, I, I didn't bother to replace it, but uh, the, the new owner can uh, uh, be welcome to replace it and have a shed for storage. And uh, come on in, check out the inside. It looks really sharp. So as you guys can see, we renovated this place to the nines. Uh, it looks impeccable. We got the living room here. We have the kitchen over here with the uh, kitchen table, dining area. There's actually a wall going here, uh, right up in till almost here uh, with a closet. It just really divided the, the floor space here and didn't look that great. So we opted to going with the open concept. And for those of you that may not know, these mobile homes usually have paneling. So it's not drywall, it's not plaster, it's all paneling. And um, so we replaced the paneling, we uh, replaced the insulation, did the minor framing stuff to just reinforce it. And obviously drywall, mud, tape, paint, um, and we went with the vinyl flooring. Uh, this floor looks really sharp. It almost looks like engineered hardwood. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, we, we changed the windows. This is a, a header for the mini split system. So this is one of four. We have three others for each of the bedrooms. Uh, again, this is a three bed, one bath mobile home. And we went with the pot lights. It just, uh, you know, really enhances the look uh, with the lighting, um, opens it up with the uh, light colors, neutral color, but it is uh, off-white, you know, it makes the space look bigger than what it really is. And if we come over here, uh, check out this kitchen. We went with uh, actually custom kitchen cabinets, uh, real wood, looks really sharp, shaker style with the black handles, black faucet. Uh, backsplash, we want the subway tile. It's got a little bit of a design uh, with some curves in it. And stainless steel appliances just makes it pop more with the fridge, stove, overhead range. And behind this uh, cupboard here, there's actually access for the hot water tank. So there was a standard uh, hot water tank. We replaced it with a uh, instant hot water tank, uh, the tankless style. And also we installed the uh, water meter. So again, back to the park, they had a list of re uh, repairs that are required by the new owner. and. Depending on which park you're at, some of the mobile homes, the water's included with the lot lease and some of them, uh, it's extra. So at the time there was no water meter here. So that meant the park was paying for the water. They said, hey, once you install the water meter, your bill will actually drop by $80. So that's what we did. It was a requirement and we saved some money on the monthly fee. Um, 
So that's one of the things and funny story, they don't really tell you where to install it. They just say, here you go. You pick it up from the electric company here, uh, Elk Energy. So I went there, bought the water meter, it was about $400 and some change. And they said, go ahead and install it. Once you install it, give us a call. We just wanna make sure it's installed properly. So I said, okay, great. So I open up the crawl space access in the back of the mobile home and I see the main uh, water shutoff. So I tell my contractor, here's the main shutoff. Let's install the water meter right here. So I call the uh, electric company. And I think they actually sent someone from this uh, town over and they come to inspect it. They're like, hey, you installed it in the wrong place. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, it's supposed to be installed inside the mobile home. And I go on and tell him that, hey, no one told me this. And he said, uh, yeah, it's basically like a common problem for some reason, the electric company doesn't tell people where to install it. Uh, I guess you're just supposed to figure, out, figure it out on your own. Uh, but at the end of the day, it wasn't a huge deal. I just told my contractor, please uninstall it from under the home in the crawl space and install it in the home where the water comes into the home and kind of splits off to the bathroom and the kitchen. So that's where the water meter is and the instant hot water uh, tank or tankless hot water. And we come over here, we have a hallway. We got three bedrooms and one bath. Right here we have the bathroom, four piece, the shower uh, and the tub. We use the same uh, style as the kitchen cabinets, uh, the vanity, a shaker style with a quartz countertop. So it looks really, really sharp. And then over here, as you can see, is the laundry area. So we have the washer and the dryer. So I supplied all the appliances and making our way down, we have one, two, three bedrooms. These are kind of small. We staged the home. This one's staged as an office and you can also see the mini split head system there uh, that does the heating and cooling. And this was where the original furnace was. It was actually an electric furnace, which isn't too common. And there is gas here. Uh, actually, both of uh, our neighbors on this side and on that side, they both have gas meters and it was possible to get it installed and it wouldn't be that costly because the gas line is right here. Uh, but talking to my contractor, he recommended to going with the mini split system. So that way it does heating and cooling and that way it's just electric and uh, the buyer of the home, you know, they're not gonna have an electric bill and a gas bill, they're just gonna have an electric bill. So it, it eliminates one bill completely and these are high uh, efficiency units. So maybe their electric bill will go up a little bit, but it shouldn't be too much. And then this is the other door for uh, the second exterior door. And these are the uh, second and third bedrooms. We have a single bed here. You can comfortably fit a double bed uh, in here. And over here we have a queen size bed. Uh, very spacious, uh, really sharp looking. Uh, from the inside, you can't even tell this is a mobile home really. Just looks like any other home, uh, beautifully renovated. You know, the contractor did a great job as uh, with the stager. Uh, this is the closet here. And this is pretty much it. And uh, on the outside, what I like about this park, this is like an A-class mobile home park. You actually have a decent sized lot. So a lot of people have a, a deck or, you know, many people have a shed here for storage. And there's actually a walking path right behind us. So you can just like walk all the way to your backyard and you're on a path and you can make your way all the way around. And uh, yeah, this is a really great location. There's about six or seven mobile home parks in the Windsor Essex area. So this park specifically is in the Essex, uh, in the town of Essex at the Viscount Estates uh, mobile home park. So there, I think there's about 600 mobile homes here just at this park alone. And uh, this is probably the best park in the area, in my opinion. Uh, and there's a few others that are competitive that are also like A plus, maybe B uh, class parks. And uh, yeah, they're actually really lucrative investments if you can buy it, buy it at the right price. And uh, if you fix and flip it properly and um, you know manage your budget and your timeline, you can definitely make a profit. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the third uh, one that I purchased. I actually bought a fourth one last week. So I've bought four so far and I sold two out of the four. This one just got listed a few days ago. Um, 
and the other one's gonna be a quick flip that uh, should be listed by next week. So definitely looking forward to, to seeing how this pans out. And we are looking at making between 50 and 100,000 uh, profit, depending on where it sells at. And uh, just to give you guys some context, I actually bought this one here for 50,000. Uh, it was in rough shape. We'll, we'll sh post some photos here for, for you guys to check out. And I put at least 80,000 plus, you know, holding costs and whatnot. Call it 150, I'm uh, rounding up here. But we're in it for 150, we're looking to sell it for about 250, uh, give or take. It's actually listed for 299, so hopefully we get closer to the $300,000 $300, range. Uh, but what's really cool is I actually bought this one for 50,000 cash, and I got hooked up with a private lender, and he was willing to loan me 80% uh, loan to value and I talked it over with him and I said hey in my opinion you know this one's worth about 80,000 as is uh, even though I bought for 50 so he actually gave me a loan for 65,000 so again I bought it for 50,000 cash I got a mortgage on it I basically refinanced it uh, he, uh, it was a mortgage for 65,000 there were some broker and lender fees involved so I walked away with a check for 60,000 so I bought it for 50 I refinanced it and got a check for 60,000. So I basically made $10,000 just buying this asset. And then uh, my strategy was actually to sell it as is without doing anything, because that's what I did with the first mobile home that I purchased. And do more of like a wholesale where you buy it uh, privately, directly from the seller, uh, under market value, of course and then listing it as is. And I actually burned up some time because I had it listed for a couple months and it just wasn't selling. So I'm like, you know what? I just have to go ahead with the renovations and see this project all the way through. And that's what I did. So it did take longer than I wanted it to. Um, you know, I had it from the end of 2022. Uh, at this time we're in July. So we did have some uh, delays with the heating and cooling system and the kitchen cabinets and whatnot. But uh, at the end of the day, we, we bought right. So we are looking to make a solid profit of uh, over $50,000. So stay tuned to, to see how we did on this deal. Yeah, there's definitely several differences between a mobile home and a standard detached home. So first of all, uh, this is at a mobile home park. So we don't actually own the land. We are renting the land. And that's why a lot of investors stay away from mobile homes because it's more like a car in the sense that it's a depreciating asset. You know, once people move in and live here, there's a lot of wear and tear and the value of the home goes down. Uh, the reason why real estate goes up, it's not because the building or property or the structure itself is valuable. It's the values in the land. The land becomes more valuable. So that's why a lot of people stay away from mobile homes. Um, but that being said, they are lucrative for flipping if you can buy them right and if they are selling in your market, depending on where you're at. And before I could actually buy this, I had to get approved by the park, by the mobile home park, because technically whoever owns a trailer or a mobile home on their land, you're a tenant of the park because the park owns the whole lot or the land, right? So you have to do an application here at this park. Specifically, it's a $250 application fee and then you have to get approved and then sign the lease. And only then can you actually go ahead with the sale uh, and get it approved as a tenant. And uh, there's just a general stigma of trailers, mobile homes. I think people just are not super familiar with them. So they just kind of stay away or shy away from it. But, uh, you know, I've been learning about this stuff for over the past year, uh, where I bought my first one last May, 2022. And um, I just started learning. I started asking a lot of questions to the different park managers. And another thing that I realized is each park is different. So I only buy mobile homes in four season parks that are year round, that people can live there all year. Uh, whereas some mobile homes, they're actually more cottage style where it's only seasonal, like May to October, let's say. So I stay away from those. I make sure it's four season. I make sure there's a lot of uh, liquidity in the market, meaning there's a lot of buyers and sellers. These trade on the MLS. They're bought and sold with realtors a lot of the time. Now my strategy is to go direct to seller, buy it uh, directly from the seller off market and then sell it on the market because that's where you're gonna get the top dollar. And um, yeah, so, the, and this park specifically, like I said earlier, they have uh, a list of rules and uh, repairs that are required by the new owner. Whereas the other park that I've purchased in, in Windsor, they don't have all these rules of repairs. They really don't care. In Windsor, you can rent out the mobile home. Here in Essex, 
they don't allow you to rent it out. It should be only owner occupied. So it's fine for flipping, but don't think you can buy it and just rent it out. If they find out, they might give you a hard time and you know there might be some repercussions with that. So each park is different. Before you buy a mobile home, definitely ask the park manager, what are the rules? Can you rent it? Can you uh, uh, flip it? Can you be there year round? Can you do certain renovations? What renovations are required? Like I said, some parks, they actually give you a list like, hey, before you sell this, you need to do all these uh, renovations. So it really, really depends case by case, you know, park to park. Uh, but those are some of the differences. Definitely follow me on Instagram. My tag is uh, alanabas17 or find me on Facebook. It's just alanabas. Would love to connect with you guys and uh, uh, just stay in touch and connect and follow my journey as I flip some more of these uh, mobile homes. Mm -hmm.